What's up guys, Eric here, and now that all of our favorite DC TV shows on the CW in the Arrowverse have ended their seasons from this past year, it is time to start doing my season overviews. A couple of changes, I'm going to do them in the order that the shows ended, so we're going to start out with Legends of Tomorrow, and then we will follow that path all the way through till we get to Supergirl, which will be the last one that I do. Also, instead of doing my general overview and thoughts like I did last year, this year I'm strictly going to answer questions that you guys left on the community tab for me for these videos. And then at the end, I will give you guys just my, my overall thoughts of the season. So if you did not see the questions for Legends of Tomorrow in the community tab, there's also one there for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I believe. And then I will be releasing uh, the question sections on the community tab for you guys for all the other shows as well. So check there for the Q&A stuff for these videos because that is where I'm going to be going for my questions. No Twitter, no videos about it. It's strictly going to be pulling from the community tab. So let's talk about Legends of Tomorrow Season 3, starting with some questions from that community tab. Let's start out with a question from Sam Parrish. She says, do you think that Nate's powers are underused, kind of like how Firestorms were just to save money? Hello, Sam. Thank you for the question. And the quick answer to that is yes. I think that his powers are underused. I think he's totally misused as a character. Um, to go a little bit further into that, I feel like Nate is basically just a carbon copy of Ray. They made him basically the same character with different powers. And he doesn't really, like, sometimes it's so sad. Sometimes I forget that Nate even has powers. Sometimes I forget. I was watching episodes and I'm like, oh, he's not using his powers. I, I forgot that he had them. And that's not a good thing. When you forget that characters on your show have powers uh, as a viewer, that means they're not doing something right in the back end. Nate is a character who has literally become comedic relief. And I feel really bad because he's a very powerful metahuman. He's got strength high up there, like close to the level of a Kryptonian. We've seen him use it a couple of times. Um, not to mention he's a metahuman who, whose powers don't come from dark matter. So that seems like that would be something they'd want to explore a lot more on the show, but they just don't do it. So yes, I agree. Totally underused. The next question is from Cream Cheese Burrito. It says, do you think it's possible for Legends to go too far in terms of silliness and jokes? Thank you for the question, Mr. Burrito. And I'm going to answer your question two ways. Yes and no. I know that's kind of a cop out, but here's the thing. Legends of Tomorrow doesn't take itself too seriously. And I do believe it's one of the few shows that has gotten better with age. The third season, in my opinion, has been the best season of Legends of Tomorrow. Now, when it comes to silliness, it really just comes down to what you like as a viewer. If you like the dark and gritty stuff, if you like the street level vigilante stuff that you get from like Daredevil and, you know, some of the seasons of Arrow and just those kinds of shows, then Legends is definitely going to push that envelope for you because the showrunners want to see how far they can go. They've said that before. They've made it very clear that they, they literally try to push it as far as they can go. There's been a couple of episodes where I've questioned what they've done. This season, there was two or three where I thought um, they went a little bit too far for me. But overall, I'm okay with the silliness. I like humor and stuff like this. Uh, to me, and I've said this almost every year, and I've said it over multiple, multiple videos in terms of Legends of Tomorrow, it's like a superhero show, you know, in the vein of Back to the Future. That's kind of how I see it. So the comedy kind of goes hand in hand with that. My biggest issues with Legends of Tomorrow, outside of the silliness, is continuity issues, storytelling issues, things where the writers just drop the ball on it because they feel like they don't have to explain things because it is over-the-top humor. If they could pull that in a little bit tighter for me, I think I'd be okay with whatever silliness that they want to go with. But um, it really just comes down to what you as a viewer like. For me, there's very little they could do to push the envelope too far. I think they've done a lot of stuff this season that I did not expect that actually worked. But again, if you don't like that kind of stuff you're probably going to think anything Legends does goes too far. Thank you for the question. The next question I'm going to take is from Sahib Singh. It says, do you think the Legends will time travel the multiverse? Well, thank you for the question, Sahib. And you must be an avid watcher of my videos. At least I feel like you must be because you're seeing into my soul here. I love the idea of multiverse travel. I like it more than time travel. I think it's extremely interesting because we can get alternate versions of our characters. Yeah, you can get that in time travel. But with the multiverse thing, you get them together. You get to see them fighting side by side or facing off against each other. Now, we know that this season coming up, we're going to be dealing with Constantine. We're going to be dealing with demons. Uh, they've confirmed werewolves. There's all kinds of things coming up next season but no confirmation of multiverse travel. 
I would love for them to do a whole season where they're dealing with time travel issues inside the multiverse. And if we get another season of Legends after this next season, I would love for them to just go into that and do that because that's something that I would love to see because, again, I'm just a multiverse person. I love Elseworlds stories. I love stories of alternate versions of characters in comics. To me, they're some of the most interesting ones because they really give us a different view and perspective on these heroes. So I would love to see it. I don't know if they'll ever do it, but maybe if we speak loud enough to the showrunners, they'll take it and run with it. Thanks again for the question. The next question I'm going to take is from Ahmad Bashan. It says it's been confirmed that Macy, who plays Amaya, is a series regular in season four. And since Amaya left the team, do you think she's going to come back as a new character? And if so, who's it going to be? Well, thank you for the question. And yes, we do know that she's supposed to be coming back for season four of Legends. And they're getting rid of Vixen because I feel like Vixen's story has really come full circle. If you think about it, they really did open and close her story in a big way with this past season. So bringing her back as Vixen when we know that she has to fulfill her destiny, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, seems like something they may not want to tackle. They may not want to go and tread in that territory and try to deal with, you know, Amaya wanting to go back and being with her village and things like that. We've already been there, done that. So coming back as another character seems like the best bet. Now, what character she's going to be, we don't know yet. They haven't really hinted much at it. The rumor mill has been churning. There's been all kinds of things going on. If I had to guess, it's going to be an alternate version of Vixen, maybe a multiverse version or a version of uh, her from the future, maybe a descendant of her that looks exactly like her. That would be pretty cool. Um, but it will have to be a character that doesn't have to go back and do anything big. No big destiny, because we've already done that story. I don't want to see that again. So hopefully we just get a really cool version of Vixen that is, her powers are slightly different. We've already done a totem arc now. So We'll have to see. Hopefully we'll get some news on that soon. Thank you again for the question. The next question I'm going to take is from Mr. M. It says, if you were to write your own season of Legends of Tomorrow, how would it look? Who would the main villain be and what would the story be throughout the season? Explain. Ah, Mr. M, what a great question. Thank you for this question. I know it doesn't have a lot to do with this past season or this upcoming season, but I'm going to allow it because I want to talk about this for a second. I love the idea of multiverse travel. We touched on this just a few questions ago. I would love to see our Legends team deal with a crisis type event where they spend the whole season dealing with something along the lines of like the Anti-Monitor or something like that, where we're dealing specifically with a crisis that requires them to go around and pick up alternate versions of characters we already know. For example, what if we get an alt version of Barry Allen? Not the one from The Flash that we know on the TV show, but Grant Gustin playing Barry Allen from another Earth with a different costume, with a different sensibility, or another Oliver Queen, a different Green Arrow. Maybe we could actually get like Batman or Tyler Hecklin as Superman coming over to Legends during their season to help with this crisis event. I think that would be awesome. And even if it wasn't the Anti-Monitor, they could come up with something else like they did with Mollus to try and fill that void for that character. But something like that would be the perfect season for me in terms of Legends because it is a show that can do these huge stories. It has the ability to tell these out-of-the-world type scenarios that we don't get on some of the other shows. I think the closest we could get to that would maybe be Supergirl, um, you know, at a space cosmic level. But with Legends, we could really just go there. We could push the envelope, and I would totally be on board with that. Uh, but what do you think? What would you do with a season of Legends? Would you do like a multiverse arc, or how would you handle it? I wonder what you guys think. So down in the comments below, let me know what villain you'd like to see for a Legends villain and what you would like for the season to be like. And thank you for the question, Mr. M. The next question I'm going to take is from Julie Youngberg. It says, nobody, as far as I can remember, has ever said who the father of Amaya's children were, so why couldn't it be Nate? Maybe she comes back for that. Thank you so much for the question, Julie. As much as I would love a story depicting the father of the children of Amaya and her legacy and her story back in her village, I don't think we're going to get that story. I don't think that's a story they want to tell. I don't think they're ever going to focus that heavily on one character unless it's a character that is coming into the show for the first time and they're telling that story through their introduction, sort of like they did with Amaya your last couple seasons, what they did with Zari this season. I don't think those kinds of stories are stories they want to tell. They want everything to center around the Wave Rider and sort of build up outside of the Wave Rider. So everything has to originate within the core of the team. And I think that's how they do their storytelling on Legends. I can't think of a story outside of that with the exception of maybe uh, Stein's daughter. 
of the anachronism when she was uh, brought into the show where something like just came out of left field in terms of that type of story. So yeah, it's possible there could be something there with her and Nate, uh, but I don't think we're ever going to explore that. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I just don't think we will. Uh, again, thank you for the question. The next question I'm going to take is from Giovanni times two. It said, do you like the way Nick was handled this season? Next season, do you want him to stay an anti-hero, go full on hero, or go back to being a full on villain? Okay, so when it comes to Mick, I sort of have a love-hate relationship with this character, and let me explain what I mean by that. I think Mick works really well with Captain Cold. I think Mick and Snart are great together. I think the two of them did a really good job in season one of being those two outsider characters who sort of had to win the trust of the team while still being best friends with each other and having those internal struggles between the two of them, I thought that was great. And then in season two... Um, with Mick, they didn't really know how to handle him as a character. I feel like season two was a rough season for Mick. And then in this season, he was turned into comic relief. There's a lot of characters who were basically just comic relief. Mick, Nate, and Ray are three characters who really spend the majority of their time on Legends cracking jokes, pop culture references. Um, you know, Mick is like the bumbling idiot of the team who every once in a while has a stroke of genius. And that's just the design of his character. Um, I don't like that about him. They're doing it because he was a, he was a criminal and they're trying to find a way to make him relatable. So they turn him into this like idiot with a heart of gold. And I'm just, there's, it's a, one of these characters you would get back in the eighties. There was always like an idiot character in eighties movies and TV shows that everybody sort of fell in love with. I have not fallen in love with the character of Mick. I don't like him this way. I feel like he's much better with snart. I feel like he needs that, second character to sort of build off with himself and and to make his character a bit more relatable because right now he's just like a sight gag he doesn't really fight he sits around and does nothing on the ship it's just like why is he here why like really why is he on the show and i i hope that they take his character in a different direction next season because i think with the constantine stuff and the darker type of storylines we may get in next season mick may have an opportunity to shine again we'll see I'm not a big fan of him without Snart because I love Snart and I think Mick was a great wingman for him. So we'll have to see. Thank you for the question. The next question I'm going to take is from Jared the Dragon. It says, what was your favorite episode of Legends this season? Thank you so much for the question, Jared. I went back and watched the entire season again. And I have to say the episode that I remember the most fondly because of the musical elements, which is something I don't always like about episodes, was Return of the Mac where Damien Dark and the rest of the team, they all had a fight scene set to the Mark Morrison song, Return of the Mac. It's the episode that I remember the most from the season. I went back and watched it several times after it aired, uh, more so than any other episode of Legends ever in all three seasons. So Return of the Mac was my favorite episode. It had a lot of problems. This was the episode where I complained a lot about the stuff that happened with Nate and just a lot of the logistics of things that happen. But if I'm going on sheer enjoyment of an episode that I could watch over again because I love so many elements of it, it would be Return of the Mac. Now, my question to you is, what was your favorite episode of Legends? And you guys in the comment section can let me know what was your favorite episode this season of Legends of Tomorrow. The next question I'm going to take is from Laura E. It says, do you think Gary will be back next season? And uh, do you think Ray was unused this season? Thank you so much for the question. One thing Legends of Tomorrow did this past season was it introduced iconic characters or things that some of the other shows did not do. or They have not been able to accomplish. Uh, Gary was one of them. He's a character that sort of became very iconic to the fandom. The fans of Legends of Tomorrow, as well as the Arrowverse, all sort of loved this weird, quirky character of Gary who was just trying to climb the corporate ladder. He just wanted a better position in the company. So I think that Gary will be coming back. I think Gary's a character they can use. They can have fun with him, um, put him on the Wave Rider, put him in all these weird positions, do things with him that you can't do with other characters because he literally is like a living meme. So um, yes, I absolutely think Gary's going to be coming back a lot more uh, in season four of Legends, and I'm okay with that. His character was designed to be this funny, quirky character. That's how he came into the show, so I'm totally okay with them continuing to move forward with him. And as far as your part of the question about Ray, Ray, Nate, and Mick all fall into that same category for me of characters who were just totally underused or misused this past season. Uh, Ray's suit, okay, this is one of my biggest complaints, and I've probably complained about it in last year's season overview. 
Um, Ray's suit is designed to be stealthy. It can shrink down. It can do all kinds of cool stuff while it's miniature. And we forget about that a lot of times, just like we sort of forget that Nate has powers. Um, you know, at least it's a suit and there can be reasons why you can't use it. But a lot of times they just don't. They all go in like four, five, six people go into this really dangerous situation where Ray could literally sneak in with the suit and do it by himself in five seconds. I realize that that, that wouldn't leave much room for a story, but when you have a character where that's part of his power set, um, then what are you doing here? Not to mention that uh, when we were at the end where uh, Bebo was fighting Malice, Ray could have used his suit to go up to a huge size and blow up like he did uh, in a season ago and fight Malus that way, but he didn't do that either. It just my point being is, is Ray, just like Nate and Mick, are mishandled on the show, and it has a lot to do with special effects, particularly with Ray. I think Ray and Firestorm um, and Nate are all the most expensive characters for them to use on the show uh, because they require so much VFX. So it is unfortunate. I like to see Ray do a little bit more. He's a very intelligent character. They need to focus on that a bit more now that Stein is gone. So let's see if they do that in season four. Next question is from Ryan Craig. Do you think Wally is better than he was on The Flash? I loved him on The Flash, but I feel like he's at his best on Legends. Uh, Laura also added up there, has it been confirmed? Uh, that Wally will be regular cast member for next season. We're going to talk about that here right now. Thank you both for your questions. We're going to start off by talking about Wally and him not returning for next season. So Keenan Lonsdale has a musical career, a dance career, a budding movie career. So he has decided he wants to pursue that because he didn't get a lot of time this past season between Flash and Legends. So Keenan himself has decided to step back from the show. Does that mean he'll never come back as like a guest or something along those lines? No. I mean, they could probably call him up and say, hey, we need you for a couple episodes. Could you come back and make an appearance? And he would probably do it. And that would be fine. But he just doesn't want to commit to another season on either show, which is highly unfortunate because I do believe that Wally was way better on Legends and just that little bit of time he had at the end of last season that he'd been on The Flash over the whole course of the season and most of the season three arc. Now, at least in season three on The Flash, he played an important role because of the Dr. Alchemy Savitar stuff. But after that, they, they didn't really know what to do with this character. So he struggled a lot this past season on The Flash. He came to Legends. He totally fit in with the team. Having a speed strong Legends was OP. They knocked him out a few times, which I talked about that in my reviews. Uh, but overall, I feel like his character fit better on Legends than it did on The Flash. And I was really looking forward to seeing what he was going to do next season. I do know he's supposed to be on at least the first episode of next season. So we will see him do something at the beginning. Uh, and then I guess we'll find out the reason why he's going to be leaving the team and why he's not going to be on The Flash. He's just literally going to disappear probably. Um, could it be something, you know, having to do with Constantine so that they don't have to make excuses for him? Maybe he gets banished to another dimension and they're going to save him by the end of the season. Who knows what that's going to be? But uh, literally Keenan has said he is taking a break from the season from both shows. So unfortunately, we're not going to see him. But I wish him all the best with his movie career and his music career. It seems like that's what he's focused on. If it takes off for him, he could stand to do a lot of big things in this world. So it's great. Plus, he just won an MTV uh, movie award for the Love, Simon movie. So congratulations to him and everybody involved with that film. The next question I'm going to take is from Anthony Abid. It says, do you like Sarah's character? Because sometimes she's great, but other times she can get kind of annoying. Thank you for the question. I'm going to start off by saying I'm extremely biased because I love Sarah. I love her character. I've loved her ever since she was on Arrow. I've pretty much loved just about everything we've done with her character so far. Um, the sexual stuff was a bit heavy handed. Thankfully, they've pulled back on that quite a bit, even though she still gets involved randomly. Um, but the good thing is by introducing a love interest with Ava, it kind of made her a bit more relatable, I think, and not so much of a cliche character. Um, outside of that, I can understand why you find her annoying. She is struggling with uh, a lot of conflict in her life. Um, and it's like this thing where she was, I mean, look at what she's been through. She's been through a lot of stuff. She's almost had a very similar story arc to Oliver Queen from Arrow. Um, so it's no surprise that she has a lot of dark things she's dealing with in her life. But I can totally understand why you would find her annoying at times. And that's why when people tell me that they're not a fan of her and they find things they don't like about her, I can totally get it. Um, I don't agree with it because I like Sarah, but I can understand where you're coming from. Um, hopefully they do something different with her next season now that Constantine is going to be on the show. It's going to be interesting to see the way they work together and how that's going to play into her 
situation with Ava. So we're going to have to wait and see, but give her another chance. I think in season four, we might see a different side of Sarah and I'm looking forward to that. The next question is going to be from Kyle H. It says, I'm all for legends to expand on magic time travel, interdimensional travel for next season. Also, could the time ship be more powerful because they don't have the old time drive that Rip sacrificed himself for? Uh, maybe install magic proofing into the new time drive. Thank you so much for the question, Kyle. One of my biggest complaints for legends overall over the past three seasons has been just how flimsy the wave rider is. Like it doesn't have any capabilities of defending itself compared to a lot of the things that's happening around it. Um, magic is going to be a big thing. You're absolutely right. With this season coming up, we're going to have a lot of magic going on and that's going to break the rules of physics. So we're going to have to deal with things that are not possible being possible, which is going to be crazy for the team. We kind of dabbled in it a little bit this past season. So I think time or magic proofing, I should say, uh, the wave rider and maybe even Gideon would be a good thing. I think it would be interesting for them to do that. How they're going to do it, I don't know, um, but it would be really cool if Constantine could offer up some sort of spell protection or something like that, because we know that he's extremely powerful, so he's probably got access to artifacts or things that they could use on the ship to help fend off some of the magic they're going to be dealing with, um, but I have a feeling that the Wave Rider is going to get beat up again and again and again and again, because that's just what happens. Thank you for the question. I'm really sorry I can't get to every question, guys, um, but I will try to do follow-up videos throughout the year talking about some of these other topics some of the questions i've answered before some of them are redundant so i do apologize for that uh, but i'm gonna try and get through as many of these questions as possible before i get tired or lose my voice the next question is going to be from charles burroughs uh, he's got two but i'm gonna go with the first one it says which new characters do you hope to join the team in season four i'm hoping zatanna or dr fate Thank you for the question, Charles, and I would take either one of those characters. Any magic character, really, from the DC Universe will be uh, absolutely fine to me. I would love for, for them to tackle Dr. Fate. We saw him, I believe, over in Smallville um, with a costume that was actually pretty good considering what we were getting on Smallville at the time. The helmet wasn't great, but I thought the actual costume itself was very much like a CW Arrowverse costume. So I'd love to see something like that on the show. I think Dr. Fate, Dr. Fate would be very cool, especially if they meet him towards the end of the season and have to use his master mastery of fate to take out whoever the big demon is at the end. Although that may take some of the steam out of Constantine considering he is the foremost authority on the show right now of all things magical. Um, but yeah, either one of those characters would be very cool. I got a feeling we're going to get a lot of surprises this season on Legends of Tomorrow, but Dr. Fate, I would totally be on board for that. He's one of my favorite characters because he's so weird and different. So um, yeah, that would be two thumbs up for me. The next question is from Matt Wilson. This is a big one. It says, with the continued focus on the supernatural next season, any hopes, expectations for the big bad? Would you prefer some kind of entity like Malice or rather keep them with the evil team aspect like the Legion of Doom? I'd personally prefer a Legion-like group of familiar foes as the main villain with monsters and demons serving as some sort of secondary threat. Uh, would love to hear your thoughts. Well, thank you for the question, Matt. This is a very easy answer for me. I love the Legion of Doom. I love this concept, okay? Even though I think season three of Legends, individually, episode-wise, it was a much stronger season than season two. I think the Legion of Doom uh, versus the Legends of Tomorrow, a team versus a team thing, was much cooler. I liked it a lot more. It added more personality. You had characters who actually felt real and, and, and organic to the show, um, nothing wrong with mystical and magical threats. I think we're going to get a lot of that in season four, but I love the team versus team aspect. I don't know if we're going to see that, uh, in this next season of legends, I would love something like that. Uh, but I don't know if they're going to go that far because we did get the Legion of doom already and having another set of villains come together to face off against them. That's not the Legion of doom would be a little bit strange unless it's like a magic council of like magic bad guys that come together. Um, but yeah, having like a monster of the week magic thing would be absolutely great. Um, and then adding in like a, like a, like maybe two or three bad guys that last throughout the whole season. I think that would be cool, but easily for me, Legion of doom was the best villains we've had on legends, even better than malice, malice, malice. Yeah. Next question I'm going to take is from J-Rod 2014. It says, I love the show, but do you think they should have kept in that you can only be a legend if your life has minimal effect 
on the timeline. It just feels like anyone can come aboard and time travel. Thank you so much for this question. I know what you're saying and I absolutely agree with you. One of the big things, if you guys don't remember, is back in the first season, the forming of the legends was a, basically a team of characters who Rip convinced they were legends, but they weren't actually legends. They had minimal effect on the timeline. We still don't know how much of that was true or false, but um, but they came together as this team to stop Vandal Savage because of the fact that none of them had a huge impact on anything in the future. Um, so yeah, that was the premise of the show when it first began, but now it's more, it's more of like a band of misfits, it's sort of like people that don't really fit in anywhere or just decide they want to jump on the ship and join these characters. And if you think about it, this past season with Amaya shows the problem with that. Amaya had a destiny. She had a timeline to fulfill. And so it was kind of like a pressing issue through the whole season. So moving forward, are we going to continue to have these characters who join the team and their entire story arc is they have to get back because they have a destiny to fulfill? The only way we could avoid that is if they actually come from the future and they have no ties to anything from 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, like Zari. So um, I absolutely agree with you. I think they should focus on that. And we're going to see how they're going to deal with that uh, this season. We don't know how many other characters are going to add. There's been a rumor they're going to add a werewolf character, a female werewolf character. So we'll have to wait and see how that's going to work out. Next up is from Matt Russell. This isn't really a question. It's more of a statement, but I do want to talk about it. He says, the final battle ended with a Bebo belly flop. If all you have to do to beat Malice is squish him, then why not have Nate steal up and crash the Wave Riders escape pod into Malice? They, they didn't need the totems and they didn't need to butt heads with the Darks all season. The finale felt kind of like the rest of the season was a waste of time. Okay, look, Matt, you're preaching to the choir when it comes to Bebo, okay? Back when he was first introduced in the Viking episode, I never really liked this character. I thought he was like, the silliest, stupidest thing that's ever happened on the show. And even up until the finale, I thought, oh God, not Bebo, not Bebo. It was just one of those things where I was like dreading it because I knew it was going to happen. I was actually in a live chat with Paigey and some of the other guys. And I said, I bet you they're going to use Bebo to beat Malice. I just felt like it was coming, excuse me. Um, and when it happened, I was absolutely angry about it, but I was also just having a good time watching the show because I realized it's such a funny, silly show. But at the same time, I understand where you're coming from. We have a team of people with all these superpowers and all they did was call in a giant stay puffed Bebo to fight Malice. So I get it. I get your frustration with it. And yes, in hindsight, it does make the season feel a bit pointless because they could have just let, you know, let the darks do everything they were doing and, and not have to fool with them the whole time. Yes, all of that makes sense to me. Um, but I think that Legends was a spectacle in season three. I think they were really just going for the big, over the top, boombastic stuff. And Bebo was just the cherry on the top of that for them. So, as much as I'm mad about it, I understand what they were trying to do. Would I have done that? Absolutely not. But when it comes to Legends, I've just learned to expect the unexpected because they're just going to keep pushing even harder. I got a feeling next season is going to be even crazier. So if Bebo bothered you, then I can't wait to hear what you have to say about next season. Cause it's probably going to be a lot more wild than it was this year. All right. So I'm going to do two more questions. We're going to go with Carly's question here because she's asking about a character that I haven't really talked much about. She says, how did you like Ava's character? And are you excited to see her more in season four? Thank you so much for the question, Carly. Yes, I absolutely love Ava. She's been one of my favorite characters across all the Arrowverse shows. I loved her as a love interest for Sarah. I think she brought out something different in Sarah that we hadn't seen before. And the best thing about introducing a new character is when they raise the quality of an existing character on the show and sort of bring them, you know, to their peak potential. And I think Ava did that with Sarah. From the moment we saw her fighting with Sarah and holding her own, I thought, okay, this is definitely going to be the love interest. I thought about that from the very beginning and it ended up being true and i i'm really excited about that plus she has her own really cool backstory that we kind of touched on this season and i think we're going to dive more into that next season and i can't wait for that i think ava's a very cool character she's not a meta human she's not a human she's very different from anybody we have on any of the other shows and so maybe we will revisit some of those things about Ava from that uh, utopian society situation that she was in as a uh, android slash automaton slash bot. Um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I I'm, I'm really excited about Ava. And yes, I'm very excited about season four. Thank you so much. All right. So one more question before I give my final thoughts on this season of Legends. And it comes from Oliver Grieve. It says, um, also, why didn't they just give the fire totem to Jax as the fire totem effects are significantly cheaper to produce than firestorms? 
Thank you so much for your question because I thought the exact same thing about the fire totem and bringing him back as just a character by himself. I thought about all of that. Now I covered this in a video before, but we're gonna talk about it again here just in case anybody missed that video. So uh, Franz who played Firestorm, who played Jax, his wife was pregnant and their baby uh, was due right around the time that he left the show and then was born either right around that time or shortly after. And he didn't do anything um, with his career uh, right after his child was born. Uh, so I think that a lot of the reasons for him leaving the show were not only because Stein was gone and that maybe Firestorm was something they weren't sure what they were going to do with that character, but also because he had a lot of things going on in his personal life and he wanted to spend time with his child. And I totally understand that. And I think that had a lot to do with it. Now, we don't know for sure if that's the only reason. Obviously, the budget may have played a big factor in it. Uh, but I do think it had a lot to do with his personal life. And it was his decision to say, I'm gone. Um, so yeah, you know, he could come back later on, maybe after his baby gets a little bit older, or maybe he's going to stay away for good and we'll only see him in alt versions of himself in the future, which would be kind of cool. Like a multiverse version of Firestorm where Jax is Firestorm and maybe Stein is stuck in his mind. That would be kind of cool. So I'd love to see something like that. Anyway, thank you for the question. And with that being said, that wraps up the question portion of my overview. Now I'm going to give my final thoughts on this season and what I really enjoyed about it. Uh, thank you guys again for all the questions. Make sure you check that uh, community tab for more question and answer videos I'm going to be doing for my season overviews for Flash, Arrow, Black Lightning, Supergirl. Look there. I will post it there and I will be taking questions from there. So make sure you guys definitely check back. So uh, what made Legends of Tomorrow Season 3 so successful? That's really the big question. And I think it was the carefree nature from the showrunners. They really just said, we're going to go with it. We're going to be quirky. We're going to be over the top, but we still have a lot of heart. We have a lot of stories to tell. And even when it pushed it too far for me, I still feel like the show successfully jumped over the hurdles that it placed before itself. And that's something that the other shows weren't able to do. Was the finale great for everybody? No. And I understand there are certain things that people wanted to see happen with the finale and it didn't happen. And I get it. I totally get it. I loved it. I love the way they wrapped it up because it just was so ridiculous. And that's what Legends was this season. Heart and ridiculous nature, carefree nature. I think it works really well on the show. I think it's going to be even more over the top next season. And if you look at their ratings and how consistent the show was, I think they're doing the right thing for their show. Could they change it up and risk it to get more viewers? Maybe, but they're going in with a new time slot. They're going to be uh, around at the beginning of the season with the rest of the shows. And uh, even though they are going to end a little bit earlier, Legends does really well with the amount of episodes they have. I know some people complain they don't get a full quote unquote full season like the other uh, CW shows. But I mean, they're already strapped with budget as it is. As you can tell, there's a lot of ways they cut corners and I would rather them have less episodes and more VFX and special effects than cutting corners, especially we're getting a lot of magic next season. So I'm, I'm looking forward to all of that. Anyway, Legends of Tomorrow season three, I'm going to rank it in terms of seasons of legends. That's how I'm going to do all my rankings for all the shows when I talk about them in my season overview. Legend of Tomorrow Season 3, in my opinion, is absolutely the best season of Legend of Tomorrow, and it's absolutely in reverse. I think Legends has gotten better progressively with every season, so it would be Season 3, Season 2, Season 1 for me. So this, season, this past season of Legends was definitely the best, so I have very high expectations for next season and high hopes for them, and I just cannot wait for more Constantine and more magic, and maybe eventually some multiversal stuff. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, anyway, those are my thoughts on season three of Legend of Tomorrow, but I want to know what you guys think and all the stuff that I talked about in this video, go down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about this past season of Legends, things that you loved, things that you've hated. What, what would you do differently? What are your hopes for season four? As we get closer to Comic-Con, we get more information, more news. I will be doing season videos about season four of Legends of Tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to talking about that because I think Legends is at the top of their game in terms of their, the demographic of people that watch the show. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for tuning in and sitting through this season overview. Thank you guys so much for the questions, and I can't wait to talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Have a great week. See you then.